Good morning, everyone. Yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful fall day here in Ottawa. In fact, I'm up here in Gatineau Park, which is just over on the Quebec side. So it is about an hour away from where I live. And it is early here. It's just before sunrise. And I'm here to hopefully capture some fall colors. Now, as you can see, there are a whole bunch of great fall colors here already. I'm just waiting for the sun to pop through. The sun is supposed to be rising. Well, it's still rising. The sun will rise. Just whether it gets through these clouds, it is rising behind me over here. And if I get very lucky, and if that cloud actually breaks up a little, the trees over there will light up as well as this magnificent area here and there's a whole bunch of great little nooks and crannies around this area i've been here before but it's the first time i'm vlogging from this location so i'm really hoping that the light does pop through but it's so peaceful here a little brisk even though it says it's 18 celsius it's a little brisk at the moment but it will warm up as the day goes on so I am fine for that. So I'm just gonna wander around a little uh, and see if I can get a good spot picked out for when the light arrives. But so here's a tip. So this is a beautiful, stunning location, a lot of great opportunities. But what I have to do is wait and look for the light. Today will be about following the light, finding the compositions the light presents. So sometimes it's good not to force a situation and just allow the situation to dictate what you're gonna photograph. And right now, that is the plan for this morning. So I've worked my way down to a potential location. Now, this is actually still a little more of a scouting mission. Uh, it is 7.20. So it's about 20, 25 minutes after the sun was supposed to rise. So obviously the sun has risen, but there's still a lot of cloud cover in this area. So it's really, and there's a lot of gnats and bugs down here. Uh, so it's really a lot of diffused light. So it's really not what I'm looking for, but I had the drone up and as you can see here, I kind of flew to this location. Now, the drone was obviously higher than me and I've come down a bit of a hill to get to this location, to where I am with this tree and that water. So I'm gonna check this out a little more, but I was hoping this would be a nice, interesting location because obviously, and I gotta be careful because I don't wanna fall in the stream. And there's very grippy things. So I don't wanna fall in the stream just kind of got this dam I assume a beavers had kind of put up or something at some point or just fell trees just laying there um, but with the colors in the background I was really hoping to get a nice layered shot but with a reflection now I can't get the reflection and really the background there and I'm pretty close which means I'd be pretty much shooting up or down only getting part of the tree in so I'm, I'm not sold on this location anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hike back up and look at it from the top of the hill. So I don't really think this location is going to work, at least for what I'm thinking at the moment. I was hoping for a layered approach. But unfortunately, the top of the tree from this hillside is still higher than what I'd like. I get a bit of the water, but it's not the prettiest of water. So it looked nice from the uh, from the drone and from a distance and from on high, but I don't really think it's gonna work for what I'm wanting. But that is a nice thing about having a drone. It can be a forward scout. Uh, I would never even probably come out this far without looking at it or using the drone to come out here. A uh, little Mavic Mini, a little great little tool in the toolkit. So we'll keep looking, but as of now, the light still hasn't arrived, so not sure what the morning will bring, but stay tuned. I met an old man I said, tell me your story He took out an old pen So this is 
is another location I've shot actually here before but as you can see from this drone footage it's a beautiful spot a lot of character a lot of interest in fact I'll share with you now the a photo I took here at this location previously uh, just to give you an idea as to what is possible here hope you enjoy this is an app that I use here to help decide whether to come out and shoot now high clouds is a great thing now we're basically at hundred percent high clouds now they're saying there's been a low cloud and medium cloud in the area but uh, that has basically blocked out any good sunrise here this morning so unfortunately just the concentration of everything has kind of made this a difficult shoot So unfortunately the clouds uh, have never really dispersed, uh, it's still extremely overcast here. So the plan is this, well, it was a change of plans basically, it's ended up becoming a very, very good and productive scouting mission. I was able to get the drone up and actually do a little forward location scouting. So I actually did find a new location that I do hope to shoot. Come back here, uh, you know, probably well within the week or something to that effect. So stay tuned, hang on. And you know, the beauty is of the internet and the power of video editing, you're there now. And we are back here at Meech Creek Valley. Good morning. I hope you are all doing well this morning. It is a beautiful foggy morning here. Uh, it's about two to three weeks later since the last time I was here when I shot the opening footage. Uh, so it is, Mid-October, so there, in theory there should still be some leaves around in this area, although we've had a few windstorms and just looking at some of the trees along the road. But I will say it's very spooky. Now, most photographers would be very giddy at the moment about shooting in mist and fog, and actually I am, don't get me wrong, I am. But I think this actually might be the first time I've actually had the opportunity to photograph in fog and mist this thick. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what I can accomplish here this morning. So I have had some compositions in mind. Uh, sun should start burning off some more of this fog, at least reveal some more of the scenes. But in theory, I should have a good view that way, but I just see fog. But I know this way, there's a clump of trees I'd showed you. I'll show you this footage here. So this uh, clump of trees in a little, little valley area is interesting. So let's head over there now and see what we can find. So we're at F11, one quarter of a second, ISO 100. Here's that image now. I've changed locations here at the Meech Creek Valley. In fact, I am in theory at the Meech Creek Valley Bridge. What, you can't see it? Yes, we're still waiting for some fog to lift. I'm not looking for all the fog to disappear, but I am definitely looking for uh, more of the actual bridge to appear with some either fog or mist uh, on either side or down the little creek that goes underneath the bridge. So we are waiting here. Um, the sun is, well, that's a nice little glow behind there. Uh, the sun is coming up, so it's going to start burning some of this off. Obviously, I don't want it all to burn away, just a little bit. Uh, so hopefully here soon we'll be getting the shot we're looking for. Now, it, it does offer a bit of a challenge right now with Fox. I'm not exactly sure where I want to set up. I'm in the general area, I know that, but I don't know whether I need to move back a little more that way or if I'm okay in this, this spot here. I, I, I can't really tell from uh, based on the fog that we have at the moment. So stay tuned. 
it's coming. So let's quickly chat, still waiting here for the fog to lift, but as I was doing that little piece to camera, like, wow, that actually is some nice light behind it. So what I did do is I set up that shot, like, why not? I'm here, it actually looks pretty nice. Let me show you. Hard to tell in the back of the camera, but I basically have the feel kind of taking up the foreground with the misty trees taking up, I'd say the, you know, the top two thirds there. And I think it really adds to nice atmosphere with the sun trying to creep up behind it. Beautiful, beautiful scene. <music> What I've decided to do while waiting for the shot here to open up at the Meach Creek Valley Bridge is I actually have set up this time lapse behind me catching this nice warm misty glow because the sun is obviously rising behind me. And I think it's going to be not only can I pull some awesome images because it's a time lapse, it's a photo time lapse, not a video time lapse. As in theory, I can pull any photo out of that. They're all 42 megapixels on the Sony A7R3. So that's pretty sweet. But the other thing is, is I'm just going to capture this beautiful morning uh, sunrise time lapse through this misty fog. Um, and I think it's going to turn out great. It'll be at the end of the video, obviously, if it worked. So stay tuned until the end. So I'm going to have to actually move pretty fast here because so many scenes are now starting to open up as the fog starts to burn away. But we're in a valley here, in the Meech Creek Valley here in Gatineau National <laughs> in Gatineau Park. This isn't a national park, just Gatineau Park. Uh, since we're in a valley, or there's valleys here, there's obviously going to be some fog and mist that's going to hang around there. But it is opening up the treetops over here, as well as my bridge over here. So I'm quickly going to grab some shots of this, but I'm also going to look for some compositions that's going to capture the fog in the lower valley but capture the fall colors that are still on the trees uh, behind it. I think it's gonna look smashing, so let me get at it. So another scene is starting to reveal itself to me. Now I'm not sure whether the shot's going to come through or not, but I have switched to my 100 to 400. And that's because in the background, the mist is opening up uh, certain scenes of the trees backdropped against the, uh, the higher trees there in the, in the further background. So I'm hoping to have the mist and the fog roll through those trees, but still obviously revealing them. Not sure whether that's going to occur or not, but that's what we have set up here. Obviously, I'm keeping my eye open for other scenes. Now, the lower field has kind of cleared itself of the fog and it's kind of shifted, blocking the, uh, the trees further in the background. So, really hoping uh, this shot opens up, or actually maybe over here. So this is a quick tip, and it's, it's something that I've learned and I have to re always try to remember is, don't get target locked on one photo. Keep your head on a swivel and keep looking for other compositions that may open up while you're waiting for one that, uh, that you think will work. So I'm gonna get out of here because the sun is rising. It's about uh, 50 minutes past sunrise. So the best of the light is almost gonna disappear. But while we got the mist and the fog, I'm gonna try to see if I can make this work. So what I have set up here is the 100 to 400. I have it on a 10 second self timer. Uh, I did put on my polarizer to cut through some of the, the mist and fog to really bring out the trees that are getting side lit in the background here. So I'm going to play with a few more compositions here and I'll show you my favorite from this particular little, little area right now. Right now, here, somewhere. Stay tuned.
When I started today's uh, adventure, I had my 24 to 105 on, uh, Sony lens, great lens, but it didn't have enough reach. So, uh, so I did decide to put on, as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned, as I did mention, I put on my 100 to 400, and it is a lens that you might not think, or a 7200, you might not think is a great uh, landscape lens, but it does allow you to compress the scene and, and I'm gonna say snipe a bunch of photos from a, from a distance that you would not normally get, uh, even if you got up close, because it's a completely different vantage point. So for example, I just took a shot of this tree with the 100 to 400 that I would not, even if I used, got close and used my 16 to 35, that photograph would look completely different than the photo I have here. And the fact is I'm able to get more of that foggy mist up in the top of the image. If I was using my 16 and 35, I'd be likely getting a blue sky and not getting the same effect. So whether you have a 100, 400 or 7200, highly recommend you do try it. Um, whether you borrow one, rent one, or you invest in one, it's a great lens to have in your landscaper bag kit. So I've lined up this shot here. Uh, basically the, the foggy, or the, basically the tree is the main subject area. It's got a little bit of foreground interest, but I have framed that basically. It's almost on the top left uh, third. And I think this is gonna look like a great moody image. We're not packing it in, no, 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 no. There's at least one other composition I'm looking to get. Uh, and it's all the way back that way. Drove past it this morning. I've, I've seen it before, I've had my eye on it before. And there's still some mist and whatnot down in that area. So I'm gonna book it down there because it is also a bit of a hike to get to it. Even though there's a, a road, like a little path, uh, I can say it's probably more likely a farmer's road that the NCC has there, but uh, it is gated off and closed at the moment, so I will have to hike into it, but that might be the last shot of the day. We will see. We will see together. Let's get going. All right, so hurrying along here. So it was a short drive to where I'm going, or so it was a short drive from where I was to where I am right now. You can see I'm on this uh, little road here, little farmer's road. And I am trying to get to that area over there, I'm trying to get to that area fairly quickly. So pardon the lack of cool cinematic B-roll at the moment, but we are hurrying against the light and the mist. So I'm gonna huff and puff and move as quick as I can. Now, you notice I have the foot here on the 100 to 400. It has its own bracket which means when I want to switch to portrait, I just turn this knob here and then I can just rotate everything. And there we go. So as I mentioned, I'm going to do a vertical panel. Uh, so I'm just going to move and lock that back in. And then I'm going to do on the ball head, 
just move things this way. And now one of the things I've learned uh, through trial and error, when taking a vertical panel, actually pretty much any panel, but uh, you do want to make sure you've got room on top and bottom so that you can get the crop that you want. So I am aiming for a 16 by nine crop. So I'm definitely gonna leave room on all sides to make sure I can get down to that crop. And given this is the Sony a7R 3 with 42 megapixels, doing a little bit of a crop is gonna have no impact on image quality whatsoever. So this is the first shot here. I'm on manual, so I've got consistent settings across. I'm at F16, 1 20th of a second, ISO 100. And second timer will take longer than the photo itself. Then I'm gonna move the camera just a bit. Once again, 10 second timer. So I'm definitely gonna have overlap. So this is gonna be a three to four image uh, panel, which as I mentioned, I'll crop down to my 16 by nine format. And what is nice, about this particular image, if I do need to do any uh, cloning or content to wear fill just to make sure I get that, it's basically a grassy field in front and a sky in the background that will have zero impact on my image. So let's move that over a little more just to make sure I've got everything I need. When doing a panorama, here's a quick power tip, is make sure you overlap each frame. That way you don't have any missing bits uh, and it also allows Photoshop or Lightroom to do that photo merge much, much easier. So here's that panorama now. must say this has been a beautiful, stunning morning. When I woke up this morning, I'm like, okay, there's gonna be a little bit of clouds. Hopefully there's some over uh, Gatineau Park. And then as I crossed from Ottawa into Gatineau, going through downtown Ottawa, I started seeing the fog and I'm like, okay, well, we'll see, we'll see if it's in Gatineau Park. But then as I drove into Gatineau Park, I could start seeing all this fog in the valleys. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a very interesting shoot. And as I mentioned earlier, I have not really had the opportunity to shoot in uh, like fog such as this. And I will tell you, I, I really enjoyed myself this morning. It was amazing. Uh, I, as I said, I don't always get the opportunity. So hopefully you guys get that opportunity as well. And I hopefully, uh, this morning, I've inspired you to try a few different things. And more importantly, looking at investing in a long lens because long lens photography in landscape, because long lenses in landscape photography is a very nice piece to have in your kit. Uh, it allows you to compress the scene and get images that you probably wouldn't normally get. So whether that's a 7200 or 100, 400, highly recommend you, you add one there. Hope you've enjoyed today's adventure. Uh, if you like today's video, please like, share, and subscribe. And do let me know in the comments below which of the photos uh, from today's adventure is the photograph that you enjoy the most. Thanks very much. Bye for now.